No, not that drone footage. I'll do a brief update on the quest for the 2019 drone footage and then get into an analysis of, of some footage that was released by the drone manufacturer DJI. I have reached out to National Geographic about the drone footage from 2019 and have never heard anything back. Some research into how National Geographic functions shows why. The president makes over $700,000 per year, with other top executives in the same range. This level of compensation is not unusual for an organization of that size, but looking through their financials, it is just the tip of the iceberg. If there is strong interest, I will do a video on the full analysis of National Geographic's public tax returns, but with a little work, you can see for yourself what has happened. They are not interested in science, they are not interested in history, and they certainly are not interested in the small amount of money our little community could raise to pay for the footage. It is unfortunate to see what a once great organization has turned into, but it is all there in their tax return, and I'll link to it in the description. On more positive news, we do have some really interesting video released from DJI, the Chinese drone company, when a drone was flown from the summit of Mount Everest. It is odd that a private, for-profit, partially state-owned Chinese company releases its drone footage on the internet, while an American non-profit organization that claims to, quote, use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of the world, keeps their drone footage secret going on four years now. But I guess they are indeed protecting the wonder, because we are all wondering why they can't simply release the footage like Mark Sennett said they would in his book. As for the DJI footage, I'll link to it in the description, but it really shows how new technology can be used to understand old problems. Most of the footage is of the south side route, and there was heavy snow when the video from the summit was taken, but I will break down and analyze this still from the video and see what it can tell us about both the 1924 British and 1960 Chinese climbs. On the south side, we have the south summit and the Hillary Step, at least what is left of it. The Hillary Step was sort of knocked down a little in the 2015 earthquake, and now is more of a snow slope rather than a the steep cliff that Hillary wedged himself between the ice and the rock and shimmied up in 1953. As a note, Tenzing also used an identical climbing technique to scale the step and was not simply pulled up, with the accounts differing between Hillary and Tenzing. Then we have the West Ridge, first climbed by Hornbein and Unsold in 1963 as part of the National Geographic Expedition. That was back when Nat Geo was a legitimate organization. The West Ridge looks pretty tame in this photo because of all the snow, but it's not as easy as it looks. On the north side, we have the third step and the citadel, and with a little historical research, I found a newspaper article stating Odell saw them approaching the citadel, the citadel being the large rock step along the northeast ridge shortly below the summit. Of course, Odell never said they were approaching the citadel, but the article was pushing the narrative that they had made the summit and simply inserted this location to meet its theory. This is little different from modern-day analysis that invents facts and cherry-picks statements to support an opposite narrative. The interesting thing in this drone photo is that it shows the problems with the Citadel. George Mallory wrote numerous letters and publications about Mount Everest. Not once did he ever mention the first step, nor the second step. However, he did spend considerable time discussing the Citadel, and it is the only obstacle that he mentioned by name, and the only one that he provided any analysis about the difficulty in climbing. And this photo shows why. Now, there is a problem with the perspective of any photograph that is not taken from the same altitude as the object. Photos taken from below the slope will make the slope look less steep, and photos taken from above make this slope look steeper. In addition, the perspective changes the further away from the object you are, in an effect known as foreshortening. Also, the drone photo was taken from the west of the citadel, so the snow ramp on its south side is obscured. This is the citadel from below, and the perspective makes it look fairly simple to climb, the reality is something between this photo and the drone photo. Modern climbers do not attack the citadel directly and instead turn it to the north or the right side, as you can see me and Zhang Bu doing in this photo. From there, you pass around the citadel to the north in what is known as a summit traverse, and then climb the dihedral, a rock formation that has a pronounced dihedral shape to it. At the top of the dihedral exits onto the summit ridge. You can pause the video and see if you can spot this route on this drone photo. If you can, you're very perceptive because the route is covered in snow. This is a photo without all the snow, and this is the modern route to the summit. Nothing about this route is perfectly obvious. The notion that the Chinese in 1960 found such a route at night is difficult to believe because there is no way you could see up the dihedral to know that it was the way up. The route heads away from the summit, and there was no reason someone at night would head back away from the summit unless they knew there was not an obstacle up ahead. 
To solve this problem, the Chinese provided two different route descriptions, one with them turning the citadel to the north, and the other that seems to say they climbed it directly. Certainly, they could have navigated the direct approach at night, but that leads to criticism that they only reached the false summit and were mistaken about the actual summit. And while you can reach the summit from the third step through a variety of routes, other than those two, the other routes are extremely difficult and likely could not be discovered at night. In contrast, this photo was taken on June 8, 1924 at sunset. For those new to the channel, Mallory and Irvin headed out the morning of June 8 and were last seen by Odell at 12.50 p.m., which is about six hours prior to this picture being taken. The clouds that had been present in the afternoon, which some people characterize as a massive storm, had long since dissipated, and the late afternoon and evening had calm winds and a clear sky, as is evident from the lack of a summit plume in this photo. No matter which theory you believe in, Mallory and Irvin are somewhere in this photo, perhaps already dead, perhaps struggling for life. And maybe after National Geographic releases those drone photos, we will be able to figure out which.